So in the last video, we introduced mass spectrometry, a valuable tool for detecting ionized organic molecules, ranging from very small organic molecules, such as simple synthetic compounds, to very complex structural biomolecules, such as carbohydrates. In the mass spectrometer, our overview showed that first ionization occurs, then the mass analyzer separates those ions based on their M over Z value, their mass to charge ratio, and finally, those mass to charge ratios are detected and ultimately a mass spectrum is the output of the experiment. In this video, what we're going to focus on is compound ionization, specifically looking at the methods by which compounds are ionized here at the first stage of the mass spectrometry experiment. We are going to focus on three main methods by which ionization occurs. The first is the most traditional ionization method, which we'll just call the traditional method. Then we'll look at a couple of modern techniques that include desorption ionization methods, as well as so-called spray ionization methods, such as electrospray ionization or ESI. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at those three main techniques for ionizing compounds. And I've listed here in order the three main techniques that we are going to talk about with regard to ionization of the compound traditional, and then the two modern methods called desorption ionization number two, and third, last but not least, spray ionization. In current chemical biology applications, these so-called modern methods are much more widely used and widely applicable than the so-called traditional methods. So while I'm going to briefly mention the traditional method, um, the traditional method is typically not as widely used or important in the fields of chemical biology as these more modern methods that we will look at as well. Looking at each of these ioniza ionization methods in more detail, the traditional method typically is electron impact, also known as electron ionization. So EI for short, which stands for electron impact or electron ionization alternatively. And what happens during this technique, the old school method of ionization, is that the sample is in the gaseous phase. So I'm gonna put the sample in the G for gaseous phase is bombarded directly with a stream of electrons. It's a rather harsh ionization technique because the sample itself, the compound of interest, is being literally bombarded directly with a stream of electrons. Due to the fact that being hit directly with a stream of electrons is a rather harsh, aggressive method that is high in energy, this makes samples that are subjected to this traditional EI, electron impact ionization, very prone to fragmenting. And in fact, in this situation, compounds often fragment so much that the actual molecular ion is not even observed. Instead, only fragments of the initial molecule are observed. And that can make it challenging to determine what the original molecular ion actually was in other words, what was the original molecular weight or molecular formula of the compound based on that molecular weight because of the fact that the molecule is essentially blown to smithereens. So the sample in the gas phase is directly bombarded with a stream of electrons. We refer to this as a so-called hard ionization technique because there's really nothing here protecting the organic molecule from that direct bombardment with a stream of electrons. That hard ionization is high in energy, and that energy causes molecules to be prone to becoming fragmented. So fragmentation can make it difficult or even impossible to detect ultimately intact molecules, meaning molecules that have not been busted up into a bunch of fragments. And so as a result, it can be difficult with traditional electron impact to ultimately detect the molecular ion for a compound. But it is a very effective method at forming ions because the sample 
when it's hit with this stream of electrons, that stream of electrons, the individual electrons end up either getting picked up by organic compounds to install negative formal charges, or the stream of electrons ejects existing electrons from the compound to create positive formal charges because the loss of electrons from a compound ultimately creates a positive formal charge by losing electrons or losing atoms from the structure. So traditional has been largely replaced in the field of chemical biology with so-called um, instead softer ionization techniques, the modern techniques. So unlike the traditional technique, which we refer to as a hard ionization, because there's no protection of the compound from the stream of electrons that is causing the ionization. Instead, in modern mass spectrometry, we have a couple of so-called soft ionization techniques that are referred to as desorption ionization and spray ionization. And these have become much more popular over time than the traditional electron impact modes because they will, in most cases or many cases, enable us to detect compounds that are intact molecular ions, meaning rather than detecting a bunch of fragments with little to no intact full compound, instead they allow us to detect the intact full compound, hence determining the molecular weight of the compound and from the molecular weight being able to infer what the possible combinations of atoms are that make up the molecular formula for that compound. We can also, in these modern modes, add additional steps to take the intact molecule and systematically fragment it to gain information about both the molecular weight from the complete ion, as well as information about individual parts and pieces and functional groups from the fragments that we can generate from this. So in these modern soft ionization techniques, desorption ionization refers to systems where the molecule is dissolved in a matrix of some sort before being bombarded with energy. And what happens is that matrix protects the compound, softening the ionization that strikes that compound of interest, that strikes the analyte, in other words. So with desorption ionization, the gist of this is, and there are many types of desorption ionization methods, but the overall theme is that the molecule is placed into or dissolved in some sort of matrix, that matrix acts to shield the compound from the energy that is being bombarded with to create ions, to soften the blow or soften the force of that ionization method. So molecule dissolved in a matrix before being bombarded with energy. So unlike the traditional hard ionization method, where the sample was in gaseous phase and hit directly with a stream of electrons here, the molecules dissolved in a matrix such as cyanamic acid or some other organic molecule to shield it from the energy that it will be subjected to during the ionization. So in other words, the matrix is going to essentially soften the ionization that strikes the analyte. A common example of a desorption ionization technique that has become very popular in the last several years in the field of chemical biology and biochemistry is MALDI, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization. This has proven to be a really powerful technique for evaluating the structures of protein molecules in particular. So what happens in MALDI, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization is that the compound of interest is placed into a matrix of some organic compounds such as cyanamic acid. And once the compound is in that matrix, it is bombarded with a laser as the source of energy to create the ions. And due to the fact that that matrix is there, the laser is not directly bombarding the organic molecule, such as a protein that has bonds 
such as amide bonds that could readily be broken, but instead the compound is enshrouded with this matrix that softens the ionization that is subjected to, allowing the compound to stay much more intact and non-fragmented than would otherwise be the case. So MALDI is one example of a desorption ionization technique. There are several others, but the overall theme is that they all involve dissolving the compound in some sort of matrix to soften the extent to which they are experiencing the energy hitting that analyte to ionize it. Another example of a modern soft ionization technique is called spray ionization. In spray ionization, this is another soft technique where the sample is solubilized in a volatile solvent such as methanol, water, or some other common organic solvent and ionized via a so-called soft method and one common way to do that is referred to as electrospray ionization. So in the spray ionization mode, the common feature here is that the sample is solubilized with a volatile solvent. That volatile solvent will absorb some of the energy that is bombarding the sample to soften the impact of ionization. So the sample is solubilized with a volatile solvent and ionized with a so-called soft method. Quite possibly the most common modern application of spray ionization is referred to as electrospray ionization or ESI for short. So ESI stands for electrospray ionization. And in electrospray ionization, what is going to happen is that when we look at what goes on in electrospray ionization, we have a capillary, which I will go ahead and try using my very limited drawing skills here to draw. That is my green, not so beautiful capillary. Capillary is our little tube here in the instrument, and that is a metal capillary. And what that metal capillary, metal is a conductive material, of course, is the metal cap capillary has an electric potential difference that will give an electrostatic field to enable ion formation in the form of a spray of ions, hence the reason it's called an electrospray. So the metal here has and the capillary has an electric potential difference. And to assign some numbers to this electric potential difference, it's generally somewhere along the lines of about three to 15 kilovolts of electric potential difference within that, within that capillary is going to give an electrostatic field And that electrostatic field stimulates ion formation. And that ion formation is accomplished via a so-called spray of ions, hence electrospray. You could think of the ions as spraying on. And so if we look at this capillary, what will happen here? in this process is that the initial sample, which is solubilized in the volatile organic solvent or even an inorganic solvent such as water. So the sample in a volatile solvent, meaning a solvent that we would be able to evaporate by lowering the pressure or increasing the temperature. So the sample is inserted into the capillary. And it enters that capillary, which has the electric potential difference across the capillary here. Looking at the different um, parts of the capillary, there is an electric potential difference there, which creates a spray of ions to yield ion formation. So at the end of that capillary, we have generated ions, 
that then ultimately will enter the mass analyzer. The mass analyzer is the next step of this process of detecting the mass to charge ratio of compounds. But the main thing is that this electric potential difference is being utilized in combination with the sample in a volatile organic solvent to generate ions that are generally intact to a large extent rather than heavily fragmented, allowing this to be another example of a soft ionization technique. So when we're thinking about hard versus soft ionization, hard ionization techniques are going to be notorious for being so aggressive and so abrasive that they largely fragment the molecules, whereas the soft ionization techniques are going to, through some more controlled method of using a matrix to soften the ionization, or using a combination of volatile organic solvent and a capillary to control the electric potential difference and give an electrostatic field are going to create a more controlled, soft way of ionizing a molecule that will prevent, to a large extent ideally, the uncontrolled fragmentation of the compounds, allowing us to detect molecular ions. In the next video, what we're going to look at is once a compound has been ionized through either the traditional methods or one of these modern methods, how do we go about analyzing the mass to charge ratio? How do we go about analyzing these ions? In other words, how do we separate them based on their mass to charge ratio so that we can evaluate what in the world the identity of the compounds we're looking at is?